Back when I was in middle school, specifically 7th grade, I let a classmate borrow a green .9 mechanical pencil with a twistable eraser. I haven't gotten it back. To avenge the loss of that wonderful writing instrument and to take out my rage that I've held in my heart for so long, we're going to absolutely murder everyone in the game of Dishonored. Dishonored follows the journey of Corvano Atano, the bodyguard for the Empress of the Isles. As the player, you can choose to roleplay me in grade school, sneaking about, trying to avoid answering questions, or an absolute psychopath, killing everything around you as you administer your revenge. Revenge is a dish best served with ranch dressing and peanut butter, and that is exactly what we're going to be having in this video. Grab your popcorn, butt plug, and thigh highs because things are about to get spicy. Unlike most games published by Bethesda, this game doesn't start you off with getting your head chopped or blown off. Instead, we take a wonderful boat ride and hop into a water elevator like you'd find in Minecraft. This game's art style is timeless, but because I'm heartless like my ex always said, we're going to skip playing hide and seek with Emily and get to the point where we meet one of the main bad guys of this run, Hiram Burroughs. I stare into his soul with the eyes of a guy who just wants his ice cream before giving the letter I was sent with to the Empress herself. She seems upset by the information and adds a few months to my purification sentence. I whimper in delight as a set of assassins come from the rooftop and I get to take my first two lives. I don't even have a reason for revenge, and I already love killing people. Oh, now you've made me upsetty spaghetti. After an assassin kills the Empress, Burrow steps in and blames me for the crime of murdering that sweet lady. Because we apparently have no ability to speak and our reputation is less than that of the Lord Regent, we are locked into a much bigger cage than we are typically used to. Now charged with the murder of the Empress, I go into a fitful rage that sends blood to every part of my petite body and start murdering everyone. As someone who hasn't touched Dishonored in a time longer than a year, the on-screen tutorials really made killing people a lot easier than the internet makes it out to be. In fact, I was so good at it that I decided to kill the people that were completely trapped in the cells as well. Samantha here took some of my rations one day, and I never truly forgave her. I hope she rots in a chest full of snails. I have no clue what they would do to her, but I like to imagine that it wouldn't be pleasant. Definitely not as pleasant as running up to someone and slitting their birthday cake for them. It really brings strangers together. Pushing right along, I grab something a little more explosive than my diarrhea after having Taco Bell, and sloppily kill two guys trying to figure out how to use a doorframe. You quickly find out that I'm about as good as Dishonored as an empty bottle of Windex works on windows. Sneaking through a window, I stab another few guys before planting the explosives and running into the first couple issues of this run. You see, when you leave the gate of the prison, there are three guards on top of a wall with what seems like no access points. I'm honestly not sure if there's a way to get within fisting range, but this inaccurate mess of a gun it tends to fire more like a shotgun and less like a pistol, leaving me with very few options. I tried a dozen or so times to kill them all, and it really seemed to be random if I'd hit them or not, but regardless, 10 bullets was not enough to put them down. With this in mind, I headed back into the prison to try to find more ammo when I found that I missed a bunch of guys. Here is where this run takes a turn for the worse. It's probably a skill issue, but I believe that these guys just keep spawning in an effort to get you to go to the sewers. I tried more than 20 times, throwing myself at a bunch of guards for them to seemingly respawn. Like I said, I'm not sure if there's a way around this or if it can be done on an easier difficulty, but given that I'd already spent more than an hour on the first level of the game, I figured that I'd better toss in the towel now, that way I could get on with the rest of the run. If you'd like, you can pretend that this section didn't happen, so that we can both have a better day, and that you don't remind me of my mother when she used to call me a disappointment for getting bees on my report card. Unlike the sewers from Ratchet & Clank up your arsenal, the Dunwall sewers are actually quite nice. There are even a bunch of rats to help me kill a few guys. Look at how cute they are. Because I'm trying to be a more positive person and hide all the negativity in my life, we are going to skip over how angry I got at the section with the rats in the body pit, and instead talk about my new Easter presents. Sure, it's a bit early, but this crossbow dart gun thingy was too good of a gift to wait for that voluptuous bunny to poop it out like M&M's. After displaying a few more skill issues and spending roughly 5 minutes opening up a safe due to my dyslexia and ADHD, I failed the drop assassination and instead put my average length, sharp cylindrical object to good use in a game of swordplay. After taking a scenic route with a bottle, I see Samuel and hop aboard his boat. As someone who comes from Fall into Vegas, a fan club of Femboys, you can already probably tell that I'm bad at the game. Regardless, I'll post my stats at the end of each level so that you can tell me how good I am at the game. If you made it to this point in the video, comment, Owl is such a good boy. Samuel tells me the same thing as we go on a romantic ride through absolutely beautiful water. It's such a serene moment of beauty before I see some of the most ugly faces in all of existence. Physically, they look quite strapping, but their personalities definitely leave some room for improvement. Pendleton has a forehead bigger than three of my erections put together, 
which happens to have interrupted his frontal lobe development as a child. Because of that, he has a crippling need for alcohol and handies, which I don't mind providing. Havelock, on the other hand, has a big rock with a C. But his stubble makes me jealous, and therefore makes me realize all the red flags in his personality. All of that is to say that these guys are on my list of people to murder. We just can't yet, unfortunately. I talk with Piro for a bit, grab my mask, and buy some bolts for the long journey ahead. After hitting my head on the sidewalk, I wake up in Assassin's Creed before talking with the outsider. He gives me powers, yada yada yada, and I start powering all over the place. Blink is hands down the best ability in the game as it allows you to escape large groups and parties without having to come up with a crappy excuse like, I need to feed my goldfish. When you and I both know that you flushed them down the toilet 14 weeks ago after it got stuck underneath a pirate ship decoration you thrifted. After getting through that whole situation and overcoming my existential dread from losing freckles, I throw some bone charms from my bedroom. The benefits they provide are probably good to some people, but I find them to be equivalent to buying weights for your home gym and never using them. Hunting around for a few more runes using a heart that I ripped out of Aunt May's chest, I hop aboard another boat ride with the good old classic Samuel. One of the things that is really great about Dishonored is how memorable these characters are. Samuel is absolutely goaded with the sauce for working for Uber for so long. Killing a guy on the docks and heading up the bridge, I run into a situation where I need to take down three guys. Now normally, foursomes are my cup of tea, but given my weaponized incompetence, I had to reset the single occurrence roughly four times. This will be a very frequent theme across the rest of the game, but you can blame me, not the game. I grab a rune, say hey to a lady that looks a little too scary to call a gilf, buy a few things from a drug dealer, kill said drug dealer, and take out a few people on the main street using my insane ability to crawl around on my hands and knees. I should really buy some knee pads, or get a pillow if I have to keep this up. Just before popping into the next room, I look at the powers that are available in the game. I'll be honest, I pretty well played through this game as fast as possible while just focusing on killing everything that I could. Because of this, I did miss out on a lot of the runes, so keep that in mind later on when I inevitably complain about not having any cool abilities. Until then, we grab Ben Time and rescue Overseer Martin. I'm not really sure why I didn't just end up killing him here and pretend that a stray bullet took him out, but spoiler alert, we end up killing him later. In terms of the plot at this point, I really have no clue what was going on, but I had started to get a feel for the combat systems. The single best way to kill someone in Dishonored also happens to be the simplest, your blade. Since it doesn't consume any bolts or the seemingly impossible to find mana, it makes for a quick, clean, and inexpensive kill. My first use of the spring trap wasn't pretty, especially because I got stuck in the doorframe when I used it, as I was expecting it to behave more like a landmine from the Fallout franchise and less like a claymore. But either way, the next area was cleared out, and I had a moment to hop around like a maniac to get a bone charm. Blinking across some rooftops and heading inside the Overseer's office, I stab a guy and check out the Ben Time ability. If you've been a longtime fan of the channel, you'll probably know how much I love things that slow down the gameplay while still allowing you to move at a regular pace. Not only does this allow me to finally be halfway decent at video games, but it also makes me feel like I'm in control, and as someone who doesn't have much control in their personal life, it really is a great change of pace. Speaking about a change of pace, instead of just killing everything like this whole video was about and I have already messed up multiple times, I only decided to poison one of the glasses. If you've ever seen a little kid touch a hot stove out of curiosity, you'll know my exact thought process throughout this whole situation. Dishonored is really new to me, so just messing around and seeing what happens is what I like to do when I play games. Heading out to the courtyard after visiting the interrogation room, I put this delicious crossbow to good use as well as display the power Shadow Kill. It essentially allows me to never have to ask one of the boys for a body bag like I did in Payday 2. Dark Vision was another ability that I picked up, but in hindsight I didn't really like it due to how short the range was. Perhaps if I hadn't killed everyone in the place that I was in, it would have been more useful, but that sounds like it requires a little more thought than what I'm really willing to expend. After several resets, I was able to get a moderately cool clip of me killing a guy and two dogs down for their evening stroll. I apologize to their corpses a great deal for interrupting their daily trip to Starbucks for two pup cups and a double ristretto venti half soy non-fat organic decaf chocolate brownie ice vanilla double shot gingerbread frappuccino extra hot with foam whipped cream and ice. After getting to someone who rivals shaggy ultra instinct in terms of their power, Daniel tells me that if I didn't fail this challenge in the first section, I definitely failed it here given the fact that I had saved people instead of killing them. But just know that if I see them again, I will make sure that their intestines are no longer in their bodies, and instead being used as filling for a beanbag chair. This next little segment here sees us going back to the Hound's Pit pub, removing our sexy mask, and following our impulsive thoughts. You see, to kill everything, in my opinion anyhow, would mean killing passive NPCs as well. Unfortunately, this chick is guarded by the same thing that prevents the Dragonborn from killing children. So we'll instead talk to these two cuties and be deafened every time this turd fires his gun. 
Do Nina takes gun safety as seriously as I do my beauty sleep. Buying a few supplies from Piero, I am sent to clear out the sewers. As someone who is absolutely amazing at Mario in comparison to my 5 year old niece, I genuinely feel overqualified for this job. After my duties were done, Pendleton sent me on a mission to kill his brothers. I told the chap that that was a fantastic idea, so Samuel bent me over in the back of his boat and left my rear end a little warmer than it was when he had found me, before dropping me off at the same place I was just at. Dishonor does a fantastic job at reusing maps due to its chaos system, seemingly changing every little detail and spicing up where the guards tend to hang out. Here I check out Dr. Galvani's offices and take out a few guys before heading to the distillery. Blackjaw, essentially the mob boss of the area, has a bunch of hot, sweaty men in his territory. Them being hot is of course a super sly joke about them being able to breathe fire, but also a perfect segue to a wonderful date on a sweltering day. Sapphire and I had met online, and this was our first date. I was excited as I waited for her, but rather relaxed all things considered. I sat on a bench, admiring the trees and landscaping as people walked by, fulfilling their own tasks for the day. One of my favorite places to go on dates in larger cities is a public park. Plenty of public eyes for safety reasons, no long commitment commonly found in restaurants, and a bunch of different opportunities for entertainment. Daffire arrived about 15 minutes after I did, still 5 minutes earlier than the 1.30 that we had timed out wearing a sundress and a smile. Her dress from afar looked like a mid-tone green with red polka dots on it, but as she grew closer and my nearsightedness proved beneficial, I saw that instead of dots, they were these cute watermelon characters with adorable faces and hands. Taking my gaze away from her sundress, she looked even more beautiful than her pictures. She waved at me and I felt a surge of excitement and a slight drying of my throat. She was definitely out of my league as far as blatant attractiveness, but that never stopped me before. We made our introductions, my voice rougher than what I was expecting after it being the first time that I had talked on that particular day, but our faces plastered with smiles told me that she wasn't completely turned off by my personality or short physical stature. After walking around aimlessly for some time, we went inside the shop and ordered our ice cream. She chose strawberry and I chose cookies and cream. We sat down at a table at the window and started chatting. Sunlight glanced off her shoulder as she brushed her hair aside. She was easy to talk to and had a great sense of humor. She told me about her job as a teacher, her hobbies, and her travels. I told her about my work in the medical field as well as my passion for art and writing. We laughed a lot before we finished our ice cream and decided to walk some more in the park. It was a hot summer day, but we didn't mind. We enjoyed the breeze, the shade, and the company. We held hands as we strolled along the path. She looked at me with her sparkling eyes and I felt a connection. She leaned in and kissed me softly on the lips. I kissed her back and wrapped my arms around her. As I wrapped my arms around this delightful fellow, I found myself at the entrance to the Golden Cat. From my limited experience of this game, there are several ways that you can enter this fine establishment. Because I don't really care about the size of my genitalia, I walk through the front door and get to work butchering a bunch of civilians. While in the past I've supported workers of the night, I'll be heading in a different direction for the sake of this video and my own Patrick Bateman styled enjoyment. Nothing too crazy happened here at first except grabbing the second level of shadow kill so that even when I don't get a stealth kill, all enemies disappear after death. In hindsight, I wish I would have held off, that way I could have fulfilled my necrophilic tendencies, but alas, their bodies should go on to do something better than a sock can do just fine. After drinking all the strange fluid in the steam room, blanking up a few landings, and throwing a well-placed explosive, I deal with the two Pendleton brothers in a gruesome fashion. The second one goes a little less smoothly than the first, but Ben Time does wonders for compensating for my inability to press buttons in a rapid succession. One would hope that because of my ability to type rather quickly that the speed displayed in that instance would be transferable to gaming, but of course that is like comparing my ability to get with men in comparison to getting with women. All I gotta say is if you're lonely, be bisexual. Saying hello to Emily, we walk through all the non-essential corpses that I laid everywhere, and she makes it back to Samuel. Owl, on the other hand, has some business to attend to. I'm not sure if these guys respawned, or how the mechanics work in this game, but I ended up clearing them out with some terribly aimed sleep bolts before climbing up past the wall of light. While on my pedestal that pleasured my prostate a great deal, I saw an assassin on the opposing roof. At first, I thought we would settle down, have kids, and grow old together so that I could stop this violent boss girl streak that I've been on during this run. But after multiple resets that could only be labeled as a skill issue, I found out that he was already married. I'm not sure why these rather attractive men didn't like my charismatic nature, but I think that it probably more than likely perhaps had something to do with the fact that I am trying to kill all of them. Returning to Samuel and whoever this inconsiderate child is, I went to Steam to find out how long this game was. 
I didn't mean to record this, but I have the footage and I think it's adorable that I tried and failed to understand any of the websites that I went to to find this answer. For those of you who are curious, we were about a quarter to a third of the way through the game. After that quick stop by the Hound Pits pub, I boarded the boat again with Samuel and set off for another ride on his pogo stick. This next quest, the Royal Physician, is one of my favorite levels from the game. Not only are new defenses introduced that kill you almost immediately, but the level design has so much range and elevation that I find my undiagnosed ADHD to be more pleased than me after receiving a new toy in the mail. With all that being said, we're going to pump it in a high gear for this level, so make sure you still have your plug in place, and a glass of water because I care about your physical health despite you neglecting it for the past 17 years. Utilizing all of my experience from the days of being a redstone or a Minecraft, I power the cart and take a super long ride. It's almost too long in fact. But fortunately, it put me at a great vantage point to take down a few guards, grab a rune, and do a bit of exploring. I'm not sure what this area is outside of being a delightful place to flick levers and grab a bone charm, so we'll skip past all the details that make you feel like a little kid with a dad that actually loved you, reading you stories, and instead talk about my terrible aim and need to reset this single encounter close to half a dozen times. I don't even know what this thing is, but it sucks more than those contraptions that milk cows. I'm sure that someone will be kind enough to correct me on how they work in the comments section, so that I can use that information for the uh, research that I'm conducting. The next big issue I ran into, this time quite literally, is whatever this reverse stormtrooper thing is. Given that it looked like your friendly neighborhood cactus, it took me several attempts to even remotely figure out what was the cause of my demise. After a few attempts and more reloads than I care to admit, I found the rewire box and ultimately the culprit. Using it and some elbow grease, I take out the next few guards. There is another one on the bridge, but Owl has adapted because he was born in the darkness. Christian Bale as Batman was so unbelievably hot. Not as hot as this guy because he somehow survived three attempts of me trying to kill him outright, which is completely beyond me. After playing with some more whale oil thingies and killing a few more guards who needed to be taught a lesson to treat their elders with respect, I upgrade Blink and head into the next zone. While this one looks like an almost an exact copy of the last area minus the giant bridge, there is one amazing difference. Can you spot the difference? That's right, it's Sokolov's house. Breaking into this guy's house is really important for the cause that we definitely support because the plot is right in front of us and we have paid attention and not rushed. In all seriousness, we need to abduct Sokolov so that we can gain all of his secrets, like how to finally get the last little bit of peanut butter out of the jar, or to sharpen pencils without them breaking off and shrinking faster than my John in cold water. In my haste in leaving, I stumbled into a nest of rather violent crows. With one arm detained with some important cargo, I had to utilize my years of experience doing things with one hand. I threw down a spring razor trap and pulled out the pistol, or rather blunderbuss, to use on a whale oil canister, which worked surprisingly well. After getting back to Samuel, completing this mission, and looking at my stats, I realized how bad I really am at this game. If you look at the amount of coins found down on the bottom right, that means that I really only completed one-seventh of the level somehow. I definitely need to come back to this game to actually play as intended, but until then we are back at the Hound's Pit. Having a delightful conversation with Havelock and Sokolov, I am already sent on my next mission. This time around I have to infiltrate the Boyle's estate and kill Lady Boyle, the Lord Regent's right-hand woman and handy giver. Overrun with guards, I start working on taking them out before meeting my new worst enemies. Before it was those cardboard pieces that come with frozen pizza, because I would always forget to not put it in the oven, but now it is tall men. I would say boys, but I don't want to be put in the same category as priests when I touch them all over. The easiest way I've found to take them down is to blank above them and assassinate them. Unfortunately, this sounds easier than what it often is. But after some persistence, I was able to jump off a nearby balcony and give him another hole. In terms of the plot for this mission and for this run, we're still going to be on that murder grind and won't be taking the slightly more peaceful option of having her abducted by a dude who uses his work shirt as a cum rack. In light of that and my lack of desire to say I stabbed a person 61 times, I've got a story about the time that I went to a fancy dance. For this one, we're going to have to go back to the age of AP classes, sports, and even more depression than what I am feeling now. High school for me was plagued with a constant feeling of never being good enough, so when a woman who I didn't know well at all asked me to go with her to prom during my junior year, I figured what could I lose? Boy was I wrong. It was the weekend, and I was heading up to meet her at the mall to grab her dress and my tux. Why on earth prom has to involve such expensive clothing, I don't know. But in just this first meeting with her, there were several red flags. She was on her phone three quarters of the time we were together, was highly judgmental of some other woman in my class that I had a high opinion of, and talked about politics when she did speak. Hell, even the color she chose to be our joint color was red. Rather than getting our clothes together, she suggested that we split up and get our outfits at the same time. 
Me being the inexperienced child at the dating scene that I was, and wanting to avoid being with this chick any longer than I had to be, I agreed. If you've ever gotten a tux as someone who is very broke, you'll know that it's one of the most uncomfortable things you can do. They end up asking you dozens of questions that you didn't even think of, and measuring you up with their scary tape measure. Getting past those obstacles with a hurt pride and a checking account that was several hundred dollars lighter, I met back up with Jackie for a moment before we said our goodbyes. We didn't talk until the actual day of prom. She proceeded to talk politics with another person's date and I kept to myself most of the time. I enjoyed my meal, she thought it was lackluster. The overall experience was uncomfortable at the dance, with everyone grinding on each other, but as time passed, I enjoyed the night after a group of guys came over and invited me to their Congo Wilan. With roughly 30 minutes left of prom, when a slow song started playing, Jackie approached me for a dance. I said that I'll pass, and she attempted to grab my arm and pulled me up. I looked her in the eyes, my expression turning empty, and told her no. She went away, crying to the bathroom. While there are two sides to every story, and she probably believes that I ruined her prom, it definitely wasn't a pleasant night for either of us. Mass ball or not, parties are still not my cup of tea. Sure, I don't need to murder a bunch of people, but having good company does wonders. If you are looking for the moral of the story, join any Congo line you can, because you'll never know when you'll be sent on a mission to infiltrate the Tower of Dunwall and take down the Lord Regent. This mission wasn't particularly difficult, but it definitely got chaotic at certain points and I ended up needing to use my whole arsenal to get the job done. I rewired walls of lights for guards to run to like moths to flames, stabbed people from all directions possible, found a few runes, split some throats, cleared the walls, and ensured that everyone else didn't make it home in time for supper with this massive tower thingy. By rewiring it, I was able to go for a terrible roller coaster ride. We'll have to save the amusement park stories for another time, because we are back at being Stabby McStabberson. I would say that it's all in the wrist, but spring traps work wonders too. Dark Vision came into play here a little bit, but as I mentioned earlier, it's definitely not necessary, just super fun. I happen to like feeling like Superman because that means I am one step closer to looking through people's clothing and seeing their unlicensed firearms. The next few girls and guys went down without much trouble, but then I came across the torturer, and wow was this man unbelievably sexy with his iron-like musk pleasing my nose. That is to say that killing him took more tries than putting on socks in the morning, and that is coming from someone who is morbidly obese and hasn't seen their toes in at least 5 years. I ended up needing to reset roughly 5 times, but we're going to put 6 times in the script simply because it would be a heavy coincidence with the previous line containing 5 years. But in the end I was victorious with the spring razor trap and a lot of bolts. For my reward, I was able to see the guy who desperately needs a fade and a tan. He also happens to need some head and shoulders because wow, look at all that dandruff. Becoming the torturer myself, I head back upstairs to engage in a few duels and to die at the hands of a level 1 grunt. It may be a skill issue, but the crossbow compensates for my weaponized incompetence. That is such a fun phrase to say. There are so many ways to kill people in this game that I kind of feel like this run didn't do the game justice with how I constantly avoided using other powers outside of Blink, but this stems from my lack of exploration and higher difficulties handing out less mana. Regardless, I find the animations for stabbing to more than make up for it, and manage to finally grab agility and bloodthirsty. To you the viewer and me the future self, I'd recommend grabbing agility and the second rank of Blink as soon as humanly possible, and never grab bloodthirsty. Given that I'm playing somewhat stealthy, the extra movement from agility is nice, but I am really unable to get a fair use from Bloodthirsty, meaning that more often than not, it runs out before I can use it. One thing that doesn't run out is my utter hatred for these things. Yes, I tried several times to get past it using a variety of techniques, but I ultimately headed up the adjacent staircase and let that electro-stimulated dildo have its own little tower to itself. This balcony section was brutal. The way that the guards were laid out made it really tricky to use my time test strategy of running out to them and saying hey, but eventually I was able to stab and shoot enough of them to get inside, deal with the tall boy, dance around like the roof at that gas station while men try to blow me all over the place, take out the wall of light, and shoot the Lord Regent. I did have to get into a few duels outside, but eventually I was able to blink away to safety and get back to the love of my life that is Samuel. I actually did much better with finding things in this map, but I'm really not sure where all that money is. Getting back to the Hound's Pits, I meet with our two best friends and have a rather tasty drink. It was warm, perhaps a little salty, but it went down rather well. So well in fact that I immediately take a nap and dream about our Lord and Savior Samuel before waking up in the middle of our honeymoon. Unfortunately, the last few sentences have been a lie. Samuel saved our lives by preventing us from dying by reducing the amount of poison used by Havelock and Pendleton, and sending us down the river. The river to Dawn's territory. As he throws our gear into the sewer system of death and hepatitis A, we reach helplessly and are once again knocked out. Waking up in a supermax prison, I start killing my way to Dowd. 
This section proved really challenging, simply because I didn't have my gear, and the enemies would sense me a lot faster than I could respond with my feathered hands. Owl isn't particularly intelligent, but he is impeccably stubborn. That is to say, when I got to where I thought my gear was, I was rather upset when I couldn't figure out how to actually get to it. Even now as I write this script, I'm not sure how to get the gear back. So for the rest of the game, we won't have our cool dagger, upgrades, or fancy crossbow. For those of you who for some odd reason still want to pretend like I'm smart, this whole section was a lie, and I wanted the additional challenge of not having my gear. I mentioned a moment ago that the assassins have a higher level of perception than most people, so when I say that this section took several resets, I meant that I wanted to grab some Play-Doh and squeeze it because my balls were unbelievably sore from doing just that. Eventually, I made it to Dowd, only to have to fling myself off of the building to walk through the building again for a better vantage point. Using bent time, I was able to take out the assassins and ultimately kill Dowd. I would like to play this game again as a pacifist and I am super stoked for some reason to find out how this section goes. Heading into the next area and killing a few stragglers, I get to the worst section of the entire game. In one tight area, there are three tall boys that want to fulfill your mommy kinks and shove their wet socks under your mouth. But since saving is disabled in combat and I love stepping on train tracks that are electrified, I had to reset this area so many times that I had to change locations on where my recordings were being saved. After all that death, I seriously contemplated shaving off my head and leaving my credit card debt behind to go live in Canada, but instead I opted to persist and go into the Dunwall sewer. Another area that was awful, but not quite shave-worthy. These weepers could easily kill me with flies, and I'm not sure how that whole thing works, but we made it back to the Houndspit pub regardless. Now overrun by more tall boys and guards, my vision turns red and I get to work. Once upon a time, a terrible plague spread across the land. People were falling ill left and right, and there seemed to be no end in sight. As the death toll climbed, the villagers were stumped on how to stop the spread of the disease. One day, a wise old man suggested that they burn the bodies of those who had succumbed to the plague. His reasoning was that the disease might still be alive in their bodies, and burning them would ensure that it was destroyed. The villagers were hesitant at first, as it seemed disrespectful to burn the bodies of their loved ones. However, as the death toll continued to rise, they realized that they had to do something to stop the spread of the disease. So they began to burn the bodies of the deceased. At first, it was difficult and a gruesome task. But as they saw less and less people get sick, they knew that they had made the right decision. The villagers learned an important lesson during this time. Sometimes, what seems like a harsh and terrible solution can actually be the only way to protect the greater good. The wise old man's advice had saved countless lives, and the villagers were grateful for his guidance. As Samuel guided me one last time, he betrayed me and fired a warning shot so that I had to move quickly. Moving quickly is exactly what I did. I stabbed, slashed, and stabbed some more, working my way closer to the top of the lighthouse. I disarmed the part two, electric boogaloo, and blink over to the nearby guard before using a razor trap on another coming down the nearby steps. Getting to the first major security hurdle, I utilize bend time and take down two guards before climbing the tower, disarming it, and visiting the handsome devil on the dock. Unfortunately for the sake of the run, I believe that these guards don't stop spawning. I must have killed these guys a half a dozen times, and more continue to come out for a visit. I mop them up one last time before heading into the control post and disabling the wall of light. This allowed me to clear out the guys on the other side one more time, and push through to the next section. For this entire courtyard area, I pretty well stuck with Blink and stabbing, so we'll just jump to the part where we take out Martin to avoid the several minutes of me dancing through the shadows and your mom's bedroom. Pendleton went down easy enough, and the next bridge section wasn't too bad as they ended up finding out by complete accident that you can throw grenades and oil well canisters to blow them up. The more you know. Taking the elevator up, I take out a guy who is satisfying another soldier's golden shower kink before blinking over to another two, stabbing a guy and shooting the other one. Moments like these really make you want to drink, so while walking up to see Emily and Havelock, I was a little loosey and accidentally threw my glass at them. Originally I was going to do this whole thing where I saved her and broke the cycle of death or some poetic bullcrap, but I genuinely failed to get there in time with being so low on mana and not having my crossbow. Harder difficulties reduce how common mana is, and if you combine that with how terrible I am at the game, you end up with this outcome. Dishonored is one of those games that make you want to go back and play it at least once a year just for the interesting mechanics and fun gameplay. If you'd like to see me play it again, let me know down in the comments below on how I should beat it. Thank you to my patrons, who are so unbelievably adorable and precious to me. I really appreciate you peeps supporting my work, even though I'm a little bit of a mess at the moment. With all that being said, I've been Owl, but do me a favor, will ya? Have a good one.